You've been just a say that we've been there. No mic tonight. I know mic tonight. I know mic. It's on vacation. Okay, ready? Now please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Trustee Watson. Here. Mayor Newhart. Here. Trustee Bachman. Here. Stephen Gabba. Present. Trustee McKnight and Mike Mosier are absent. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the minutes of May 16, 2022 and June 6, 2022? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a um, motion to accept the following reports. May 2022, the Clerk's Office, Justice Department, Planning and Zoning, and the Building Department. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And may I have a motion for authorization to pay all approved and audited claims in the amount of seven hundred and forty two thousand eight hundred and eighty seven dollars and eight cents. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, under correspondence this evening, we have a letter from the former Warwick Valley Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, Michael Jandro, um, and also a letter of resignation from Zoning Board of Appeals member Dylan Geibler. Uh, I just want to make a note uh, publicly that we are, uh, you know, we want to fill that um, that seat, and we have some other seats. So if you're interested in serving your community, please contact uh, Asa Village Hall, and we'll we'll give you a rundown as to what's available. Uh, and the, the number here is 845-986-2031, and you could speak to uh, Raina, the village clerk. Um, and we also have a letter of appreciation from Commander Stan Martin of American Legion Post 214 for the work performed by DPW Supervisor Mike Mosier and the Department of Public Works staff. And also a letter from the Warwick Fire Department regarding the replacement of the Fireman's Monument in Veterans Memorial Park. And um, just for the public to know, um, they are not going to be re replacing the monument as they are going to be repairing it. And, um, you know, Making it, uh, you know, a little bit more um, seaworthy, I guess, would be the uh, word. And they're basically adding and adding uh, a border around the back side right. to uh, protect the flagpole. Right. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, do we need to um, give permission at some point for them to do that? Um, I I don't believe so. I think that it's sort of a like little league. You know, they're working. They're going to be doing work. Um, they're covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. And we discussed it, and we thought cool. that it was something that they, you know, it was there done in house. Be a resolution, Michael. Okay, That's our legal counsel says there should be a resolution. Okay. It'll be cleaner for everybody. Okay, right? it, it just will be. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, okay, well we can add you that. can start putting your pen to paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> add that to the addendum list. So, okay, so. Uh, and so uh, we'll open it up to privilege of the floor. If anybody would like to speak to the board this evening, please. Cheryl, Cheryl Rogowski. Hi, good evening, it's Cheryl Rogowski. And I'm here tonight in my position as chairperson and administrative manager of the work at the farmer's market. And we would like to um, please ask you to favorably consider keeping the Bank Street Street closed during the duration of the farmer's market, and I'll be quick, um, but just so that you all have some of the same numbers that you've all been working with. In 2019, we had over 7,000 people come to the market. 2020, not over 9,000. In 2021, it was over uh, 13,000, and this is year to date as of this past weekend, these numbers, uh, 13,296 people. And then this year, year to date so far, we are at, um, we are, at 1,685 people, and we're averaging over 1,700 people per Sunday at the market. Father's Day, we had 2,786 people come to the market. Um, we're starting to calculate and keep track of the number of uh, pedestrians coming down Bank Street. Three weeks ago, it was 100, and we have volunteers doing this, and it's not for the entire duration of the market, but three weeks ago, it was 100. Two weeks ago, Father's Day, it was 225, and then this past Sunday, it was 242 people coming down Bank Street. So that's pretty much all I have. If anybody has questions, they know we're how to reach us. Mm -hmm. Again, we just please ask you to consider for public health and safety uh, to keep, the, keep it the way it is. So for the public to know, uh, we created a small committee 
which included you uh, and uh, another member of the market. Um, uh, so you know, we met at Sunday at the market. Right. Will was there, my co-chair. Will, Linda, okay. our bookkeeper. Okay. Amanda is also our secretary. Very good. And that included uh, Mr. Irata. Yes. And um, Carly. Correct. And uh, Tom. Um, and there was a representative from the police department, Jennifer. I don't remember her name. She was also present at that meeting. Mm -hmm. It was Father's Day, so she uh -huh. couldn't make it. So, um, uh, I, I, yeah, think so there, I think there. I think there was a lot, a lot going on that morning. So yeah, we had yeah. an open discussion of what could possibly be done. Um, you know, about putting in more barricades and more securely closing off the market. We did have an incident on Mother's Day, opening day of the market, 11 o'clock in the morning. A car drove into the farmers market. Um, after that, and I informed everyone um, that needed to know about that at that point in time, and we immediately got more barricades in place, so we more securely closed that off. Um, but, it, I mean, it is a concern, especially since that happened this year. Yeah. I mean, God forbid, you know, you hear about these horror stories in other markets. We yeah. don't want that happening here. And I know no one wants to be responsible or liable for that. Absolutely. So, yeah. so we are working together trying to see what we can do. But at this point, you know, we're asking to keep things the way they are until we get things figured out. Well, we're not making uh, uh, any motion this evening. Um, because we were waiting actually for uh, a r report from the police or, you know, some input from the police and, um, and so be it, you know, and, and then we'll, we'll make a determination based on all the information that was uh, brought to us. Tom could not be here tonight because he's, he's not feeling well, but uh, I would like him to be in the room and to hear, you know, his take and of, of course Carly sim all simultaneously. So, um. Carly, do you want to add anything? Um, well, I thought it, I thought it was a really productive meeting um, last Sunday, and one of the options that we sort of walked away from, and this was the the thing that we're kind of looking for some feedback from the police department is putting in barriers, um, shifting the farm, shifting the the partner tents that are usually, I'm looking at Raina, like, <laughs> I'm telling Raina, <laughs> Shift, shifting the, the partner tents that are along the back of the fence forward and having sort of barri physical barricades installed. I mean, we are a little concerned about kind of the potential movement of those, you know, in, in case of a vehicle, but uh, we were looking for feedback from the police department on the space that might be needed. Um, and you know that that seemed more like a potential near-term solution with the need to kind of talk about longer term solutions but um, okay. sort of understanding the need for the businesses to be able to access um, a, a, coupled with the safety concerns so we certainly don't want to impede anybody from making money I mean mm -hmm. you know we're all, we're all here to do that um, yeah, we just want to be safe. Yeah. Right. And then, um, and Cheryl and I have actually a follow-up meeting scheduled for this Sunday to talk about some um, additional alternative, uh, even possible, you know, locations, needs, et cetera, for the farmer's market to help address uh, the need longer term. And obviously this, this part is predicated on the police report, but if we could truly keep that a one way, so there is no two-way traffic coming in at the bottom, by the South Street entrance. I, I agree. I believe that that is really what we have to look at also, whether it, there's a market there or not, on how the flow of traffic goes on Bank Street. Mm -hmm. I guess in my mind it should be one way all the way to South Street uh, because it's confusing. And, um, and you know, yes, uh, it's, it, the, the businesses can be entered in through the parking lot when the farmer's market is not there, or they can go down. Bank Street uh, from Main Street and get to where they have to go. Well, so. And that was the alternative that we had discussed with the barriers, that that would enforce a one-way, um, one way. and then um, Tom and I were researching permanent bollards, like not permanent bollards, but bollards that could be installed rather than um, just kind of, you know, barricades mm -hmm. that can be put up and taken and down. Someone that's made the suggestion about speed bumps coming down, which would be awesome all year round to help slow down the flow of that the, the vehicle traffic coming through there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Thank you so much for your time. Mr. Yes. Mayor, yes, sir. for the record, I was uh, unfortunately not attending Father's Day with my family that day. I was called on an emergency, required my presence to be there for almost six hours. 
So I do apologize for not making the meeting. No, it was work related, and I'm more than happy to come to future meetings. Okay, thank you. Provided everything else falls in place. Yeah. And your deputy that was there was she was great and very. Unfortunately, buried. I asked her yeah. on my way to the emergency. I was going to to just sit and listen for me. She was not aware of any of the conversation <laughs> prior to it. So yeah, I'm sure she wasn't able to give more than just her presence, but yeah. it was in my place because of another issue. Understood. Understood completely. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the accident. Uh, this is Mr. Iorato, for the record. <laughs> uh, the accident that Cheryl speaks of, the car actually came off of South Street uh -huh. into the farmer's market. It did not come down Bank Street. Okay. You know, and, and one of the things that we spoke with Carly and Tom and, and Cheryl and stuff was during the farmer's market, farmer's market, making it one way from Main Street to South Street. And, and the other thing about, because I was there on Sunday, I got there around 11 or shortly after, and I hung around for 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, the fence along, I mean, when we talked about this a couple of years ago, the big thing was f the fence along the tracks. Mm -hmm. Because the real issue was back then, and I'm not even disagreeing, that people were coming across the tracks. There was really no fencing on the farmer's market either. So people were just going blah, 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 back and forth. And I don't disagree with that. It's just simply the fact, also at the same time, there was never an incident either in almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been in that store for 30 years, so there's never been an incident on, on, on Bank Street during the farmer's market or during any other time. You know, but with the fence up along the tracks and the fence that is put up now, and they did move their tent, their one tent, inside of the fence on Sunday, and which I appreciate. And But the fence that was up, it was only up halfway, and then right, right where, um, where Emily uh, Pizza is right there, there was a big wide opening. So people were still walking out. But even at, even at that time when I was there, there was really never more than maybe 20 people or so, you know, walking up and, and coming out of the farmer's market. So if there was a fence from South Street all the way up to the corner of the sidewalk by my store, I mean, they couldn't walk out if there was one of the, those orange fences, which we had discussed, going from the right on the corner of my building all the way down the South Street with the fence over there, people just can't walk back and forth anymore. They mm -hmm. can't walk out of the farmer's market into Bank Street. Right. With a couple of speed bumps or humps, whatever, <laughs> whatever they, whichever they are, you know, would really be helpful. And, you know, I, I had two people today say to me, oh, I tried to get to you yesterday. And I, I couldn't get down your street, you know. And um, then they went somewhere else. So... You know, I mean, we've been through this yes. four years ago, three right. years ago, right. you know, and so... Uh, and just a point of clarification, though, by fence, you mean the metal barricades. The metal barricades, the orange metal barricades. Orange metal barricades. You know, it, it, they did have it from South Street up to where the island is, and then it was open um, up just past Emily, and then there was a couple of more. But it didn't stop people from walking out, but there was a big, huge opening between... Um, I'm not sure which uh, bed there's right there. He has the, uh, uh, across the memory. James. Yeah, th the th thank you. So, but that was wide open, so there was no restrictions on stopping anybody. But, and as you know, I mean, you know, I've been here a long time, and, um, you know, it, it, it has affected my business, mm -hmm. you know, for two hours. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where we're at. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank so. you. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is. Uh, should I stand? Or? Uh, you can sit if you. If okay. It's okay. My name is Amanda Stang, and I live at 46 Woodside Drive Hi. in the village. Nice to see you. Um, I've been living in the village for almost 26 years, and I'm also a vendor at the market, mm -hmm. so I know the village pretty well. Um, I'm here to speak out against a proposal brought to the village trustees re recently to reopen Bank Street to vehicle traffic on Sundays while the market is in session. I have three short reasons why. First one is. Bank Street is a one-way street that goes downhill, so any cars traveling on it would be doing so in a direction downhill toward the market and the market's vendors and shoppers. Secondly, there are no parking spaces for shoppers on Bank Street. Thirdly, 
Many Sunday pedestrian shoppers use the Bank Street Bridge as an easy way con to continue their Sunday shopping after they have visited the farmer's market to travel to the restaurants and businesses on Main Street. So I really, uh, those are my three reasons why I don't see the merit of opening Bank Street on Sundays to car traffic. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to leave that with us? Yes, I would. Yes, thank you. If you could give it to the clerk, actually, if you don't Should mind. I bring it now? Yeah, right, right now would be okay. great in case you have to leave. Much easier to read from a paper than try to remember. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think um, in terms of next steps, um, it, it would make sense for us to meet with the chief to yes. talk about the various right. safety concerns that have been raised. That's what I was thinking. And then, and also for me to hold the meeting with um, Ms. Rogowski on Sunday to talk about space needs for the farmer's market and how it's growing and changing. And um, there's some alternatives that we've just been discussing and I'd like to see kind of what your thoughts are um, before we advance any other discussions with um, well, those locations. On top of that, could we, does the village have enough orange fences to go from South Street to corner to the corner of the sidewalk by my building. To to do I mean not to open to the, run the fence to run the fence but not to open it. not to open up the street. But not just to open up the street, but just, just run the fence from one end to the other and the fence well obviously the fence is already except for the ones they kicked in of course. <laughs> and but run the fence and see because you know I mean if Chief Raider is going to be there and we're all going to be there, let's really get a clear look at how it's going to be and how many people are actually because I'm telling you when I I was there for like 45 minutes on Sunday and you know I mean I know Cheryl's running the thing and she's doing her busy but there was really not that many street and that many people in Bank Street you know except when they were leaving so if they could not leave into Bank Street that would be you know they'd have to leave out to South Street or leave up onto the sidewalk which they can then walk up Bank Street, right. you know. And I understand where the, the farmers market brings in business, but at the same brings in business to Main Street, like um, I'm sorry, what her name, but it doesn't necessarily bring in business to me. I get some people out of it, but you know, but my other customers that don't go to the farmers market that are out shopping or going or they're out going to church or going out to breakfast or doing whatever, and they just want to drive down and like they normally do, they stop or they park but they can't park into a parking space and now they just you know they stop or they just or obviously they don't even come to me you know for okay. those couple hours well i i will check with mike mosher to see if we have would have enough stanchions to to at least do kind of a, a configuration it was a clear picture sure. of people i do so, yeah. how many more would we need because i know there were two in memorial park at least two in memorial park and they were still there Sunday morning. Well, I, I'm not sure exactly how many, how long are they? They're eight feet? Eight feet long, yeah. So we would need probably 20? No, oh, I don't believe we have that many. <laughs> and, I mean, um, you know, it's got to be. One of the concerns that I have, too, is the setup, the takedown, and the storage of that many stanchions. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot, and I don't believe we have that many I, I will check but one of the que key questions that I have for you know when we, when we meet to discuss um, safety is the potential for a vehicle to move those barriers because they're temporary barriers and um, and that's just a, a concern that I have in terms of like if a vehicle did come down Bank Street and was going quickly you know, would there be an opportunity for those for it to still migrate, you know, into into the market and into pedestrians, which is part of the reason that I was interested in understanding these the removable bollards, bollards that can screw into the ground and could be maybe easier to store, maybe more expensive on the front end from a capital, you know, capital labor intensive, too. maybe less labor intensive than actually those. Pieces, maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> yeah, but well, even still, it may not be. It's not. It does. It it may not be a long term solution. And, and I don't even budget wise. I don't know if we can right. 
swing that this year. So. And one other statement yeah. is maybe it's time for the farmers market to move across the street. Okay. Which was talked about with 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 Carly and Tom also. Well, I believe that that is going to be part of the discussion. You know, but it's not going it, to. It's right. It's there for now, and that's important to recognize. So, and we want it to be a safe experience, but we also, you know, value your business. So, we're trying to weigh it out. So. Okay. Okay. Right. Anybody else would like to speak to the board this evening? Uh, my name is Francesca Bryson. I'm Hi, from Francesca. The Warwick Coalition. Um, I have two things I'd like to speak about tonight. The first is a certificate of appreciation to the village of Warwick um, for the constant support of the coalition and our mission uh, to create positive change within the community, especially to youth. So, am I able to? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Why don't we stand with that so that the Roving photographer can. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> do, you, do you want to come? Roving uh, photographer. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah, I took a photo. Come on, board. Okay. Yeah. Come on, get on. Just the board. Yeah. Hey. Really? Yeah. Get in there. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ready? All right. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And we have a proclamation on tonight's agenda. I, I did bring that as well. That was the second thing I was going to talk about. So um, I just created this proclamation. It was actually a template from National Layout, uh, which we are registered for. Um, and it's basically just the mayor stating that he is um, recognizing that August 2nd is going to be National Layout here in Warwick. So I have three copies, one for you, one for the coalition, and one for the police department. Great. Terrific. So the board is going to authorize me to sign it tonight. So that will be a wonderful thing. Well, hopefully, I shouldn't be presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Uh, yes. Yes. So uh, the second session of the Junior Police Academy filled up in a couple of days. So we will be holding two full sessions this summer, one in July and uh, one in August. So we're very, uh, very excited about That's that. That's excellent, yeah. Uh, secondly, last Thursday, uh, we deploy body-worn cameras to our officers. Uh, most have been trained on it, so when we're out there now, in our interactions with the public, we will be uh, recording. Great. So we're happy about that initiative. The town board was very supportive. Uh, it took about a year to, as you know, with projects between bidding and finding every detail to make sure we have everything covered. But we have a we have a good solid program right now. So. You will see, uh, you'll see our officers with cameras on. That's great. What system are you using? We use an Axis through Hudson Valley Computer Guys. Okay. Out of, uh, I believe it's out of New Windsor or Cornwall, that area. So are, is, are other agencies using those as well? Mm -hmm. There are some in uh, Orange County, which we obviously did references. So uh, we're happy We're happy with the features that it offers, and I think it'll, uh, it'll do well for us. And can I say that I was going to the carnival on Friday night, and I was coming down Third Street, but there was an officer on his bike going up Third yes. Street, and I was thinking, man, that guy's got really strong legs. He was, uh, was trying to get them. <laughs> he was trying to get them exactly. I thought it was you at first, but then I said, no. No, no. you wouldn't see me. <laughs> I'd be pushing it. And <laughs> but, uh, the, the bikes have been. They were they were very useful at the carnival. Yep. Uh, all all the days. And uh, we're, we're happy to have them out there, too. We have a, a couple more training sessions this summer, and there'll be more officers qualified as well. Good. Well, thank you. You're doing great, great you. work. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, we actually, before we go into motions, uh, we have to go into executive session to have a uh, conversation with our council. So if, um, Carly, if you could make um, just a... Uh, to seek confidential advice of counsel uh, as the motion, and then if someone can second it. And we, you can stay here. We'll go into the room next door, and we'll be right back. Will you pause the recording so we don't have a hot mic here? Uh, <laughs> we, we will do that. <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session for the reason of seeking confidential advice of counsel. Okay. Second. Okay. We'll Aye. be back in a few minutes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> There was a vote on that? Yes. Yes, there was. Very yeah. Quiet. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> quiet. <laughs>
Yes, we did. I didn't read every letter. Oh, okay, I just okay. said there was a letter from. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we should be back. Okay. Uh, okay. Do we have to make a motion to come out of executive session? Yes. Yeah. So, could I have a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so. Do you want to begin with this motion or do you want a little time? I'll do whatever you want. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um, I suggest that the board have someone make a motion to have accurately and Hubble appraisal company perform appraisal work on behalf of the village and to authorize the mayor to execute, execute any documents necessary for such retention. Okay. So, oh, so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Trustee Cheney? Motion to grant permission to Village of Warwick employee Arthur Wendell to carry over 10 vacation days. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to acknowledge receipt of the standardized notice form from the New York State Liquor Authority for an on-premises liquor license for the South Street Saloon LLC located at 15 South Street, Warwick, New York, 10990, and authorize the village clerk to submit a letter notifying the New York State Liquor Authority that there are no objections to this notification and application. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Carly. Um, motion to approve the fiscal year 2021 to 2022 budget modification and transfer request per the village treasurer's letters dated June 23rd, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve the fiscal year 2022-2023 budget modification and transfer request as per the village treasurer's letters dated June 21st, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 budget appropriations and revenue for the increase in chips, Pavani, and EWR as per the village treasurer's letters dated June 21st, 2022. Pave, pave New York. Pave New York. <laughs> okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to refund the facility use application fee in the amount of $250 to each of the following organizations. Warwick Historical Society for the 2022 George Washington <laughs> 5K event. Union AME Church for the 2020-22, I mean the 2022 Community Health Fair. Warwick Community Bandwagon for the 2022 Walk of Acceptance Parade and Celebration. And the Warwick Valley Chamber of Commerce for Applefest 2022. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to grant permission to the Town of Warwick Police Department to use Veterans Memorial Park for National Night Out 2022 on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022 from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Request includes use of electricity and restrooms. Completed park permit and proof of insurance have been received. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Would you like to read the proclamation of National Night Out? Yeah, I will read that. That be great. Uh, proclamation of National Night Out 2022. Whereas the National Association of Town Watch, NATW, is sponsoring a unique nationwide crime, drug, and violence prevention program on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022, entitled National Night Out. And whereas the 39th annual National Night Out provides a unique opportunity for Warwick to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community crime prevention efforts. And whereas Warwick Valley uh, Prevention Coalition plays a vital role in assisting the Town of Warwick Police Department through joint crime, drug, and violence prevention efforts in the Warwick community and is supporting National Night Out 2022 locally. And whereas it is essential that all citizens of Warwick be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and impact that and impact that that their participation can have on reducing crime, drugs, and violence within the Warwick community. And whereas police, community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness, and cooperation are important themes of the National Night Out program. 
Now, therefore, I, Mayor Michael J. Newhart, do hereby call upon all citizens of Warwick to join the Warwick Valley Prevention Coalition, the Town of Warwick Police Department, and the Village and Town of Warwick on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022, uh, from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Veterans Memorial Park for National Night Out. Furthermore, let it be resolved that I, Mayor Michael J. Newhart, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022, to be known as National Night Out in Warwick. Second. And it is a roll call. Trustee Cheney? Yes. Trustee Foster? Yes. Trustee Bachman? Yes. Mayor Newhart? Yes. Okay. Motion to grant permission to the Warwick Fire Police to hold a coin toss from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, July 23rd, 2022, Sunday, July 24th, 2022, Saturday, October 15th, 2022, and Sunday, October 16th, 2022, on Route 94, Oakland Avenue, near the entrance to the village in front of 27A Oakland Avenue. Completed facility use permit and proper insurance have been received. Second. And discussion. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I brought up the point that since it's not a village street, we may not have total control over it. Uh, our attorney agreed. And so I would like to uh, offer the following amendment to the motion. So that after it says motion to grant permission, I would like to add subject to any required state approvals. So if someone could accept the second. Or second, so second, second, it. It. second, second as, uh, as second as amended. Yeah. All in all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion to grant permission to the Warwick Fire Department to use Veterans Memorial Park for a 9/11 memorial service on Sunday, September 11, 2022, from 4:30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Request includes use of electricity near the entrance of the park. Completed park permit and proof insurance have been received. Okay. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Do you want me to read Trustee McKnight's motion? Uh, why don't we? Uh, who's after that? Why don't we give that to Corey just oh. so we make can a motion to return the planning board escrow balance of one thousand three hundred and forty-five dollars to John LLC for amended site plan approval at thirty-one Forrester Avenue. All invoices have been paid as per the email from Village Engineer Dave Getz and Planning Board Attorney Robert Dickover. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And. Um, let's see what we have here. Uh, Carly, you're actually uh, the next the Waskels? two. Yeah. Um, oh, I lost the amended motion. Uh, we have it. There it is, I think. Yep. Motion to grant permission to the Warwick Grove Waskels Senior Softball Club to use the Veterans Memorial Park Pavilion for 4th of July celebration on Monday, July 4th, 2022 from 12.30 p.m. to 6 p.m., including the use of alcohol and park restrooms, completed park permit, liability insurance, host liquor liability insurance, and security deposit have been received. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion to hire Caitlin Chester at $13.50 per hour as an addition to the 2022 summer recreation staff per the recommendation of Village of Warwick Recreation Director Ron in Troini. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Barry, would you take the last one? Motion to appoint counsel from Drake Globe LLC as alternate attorney to the Village of Warwick Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then um, do you have the... I'm going to read it, but somebody's got to actually make the motion. Okay. okay. Motion to approve the Warwick Fire Department's proposal for the replacement of the Fireman's Monument in Veterans Memorial Park. Okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, reports. <clears throat> Trustee Cheney? Yes, I'm very happy to report that uh, um, the Warwick girls' uh, major softball team Won its game this evening. They and did. They oh, are wonderful. the section nine section district nineteen champions. Wow. <laughs> what a comeback. Yes. Yeah, I, they, I was at yesterday's game and they did not win. 
and boy, it was it was a tearjerker. <laughs> it, it was a slugfest. I don't know yeah. whether I, I whether they sent me the score or not. Yeah, yesterday it was. Oof. Boy, they were. Yeah, they were hit. Both teams were hitting. And it was so hot. Okay. It was so incredibly hot. Cameron Moore hit a two-run double walk-off to win eight-seven. Wow! Wow! As it should be that close because they were both very good yeah. teams. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I kind of feel sorry for Pine Bush because they they did have a good team and uh, yeah, you know, not everybody can win. But I'm very happy for our world major girls softball team. So they they were undefeated except for. They they had made their way all the way through the bracket undefeated, and the game yesterday was against Pine Bush, who they had defeated previously. That was Pine Bush's only loss, and it's a double elimination tournament. So uh, Pine Bush won yesterday, um, and then uh, you know the winner today takes the flag, and Warwick was able to do that. That's Excellent. Thank you for reporting that. Anything else? No. Okay. Well, that's pretty you good. can't top it. So no, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, do you have anything for us tonight? Um, yeah, I'll provide an update on the master plan Perfect. process. Yeah. So um, we're working on assembling the stakeholder advisory group um, that will support completion of the master plan process. For, Raina, for Memorial Park. For Memorial Park, mm -hmm. yes. Memorial Park Master Plan. Uh, Raina had sent around as a, um, an email to a variety of organizations to to um, obtain representation. Our goal is to um, have a, a nice cross section of the community, um, a equal representation, ideally of both men and women, representation across all age groups, and representation across kind of our cultural and racial diversity in the village. Um, so the organizations that Raina reached out to um, sort of represent that, the various homeowners associations nearby, the skate park initiative, the youth advisory board. Um, we're working on finding a representative from the cyclist community, um, the various rec recreational leagues, um, and a variety of nonprofits. Great. So. Um, and so the, the responsibilities of those folks, you, you know, we think the master plan process is going to take about three months and um, it will, uh, committing to kind of the meetings, we think there'll be probably about six meetings and it'll be about 15 hours total across those three months. Very good. Um, so hopefully that'll get stood up in August because it'll take time for us to get nominees and, and everything. Great. Uh, but we're very excited <laughs> and then also um, we processed down the feedback that we got from the listening session last month, and then that will, uh, uh, we think, will be going up online sometime soon. Great. Great. Um, I can also provide an update on the Bank Street. I guess maybe just an ad. Uh, I was planning to provide an update on that, but just sort of some additional thoughts that I had. Um, I did find the, the group meeting that we had really productive. People were really focused on problem solving. And um, that interim solution that we had identified to, to kind of block off Bank Street um, could potentially be um, a temporary, you know, I don't, I don't think we ever saw it as anything but like a, a temporary kind of urgent fix to address some of the parking and, um, but completely um, pending confirmation that we, we can do that safely because yeah. I'm really concerned about the safety of pedestrians um, in that area. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we're also coordinating with the Chamber of Commerce to do a listening session with our merchants and restaurants because now that folks are rolling out of the pandemic, they're now facing inflation and other issues. Um, and so um, sort of as the economic development and tourism liaison, we thought it was important to connect with those folks. Even as uh, kind of a follow-up to COVID because that, yeah. that was a great uh, way that we, we were able to do outreach uh, through the chamber, partnering with the chamber, but now I think you know to continue that process uh, after what has happened, and and to I, I think also to make um, the business community understand that it's not just during world emergencies that we we are listening, but at at all times. So I think it would be good. So. Yeah, well said, uh, Corey. Uh, two things. Um, the Warwick Historical Society is hosting its second annual George Washington Day 5K, Saturday, July 23rd at 8.30 a.m. at Veterans Memorial Park. 
you can run or walk. Uh, for more details, you can call 845-986-3236, sign up on Facebook or on their website, and if you register by July 1st, you will get a free t-shirt. Okay. Um, the second thing that I'm actually really excited about is the Certified Local Government Program. It stands for CLG, and it's something that's been adopted by more than 70 municipalities across New York State. Um, it would essentially take the ARB, the village's ARB, and make it into the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, this is aimed at preserving our historic landmarks, buildings in the village. Um, we have been meeting weekly, Mayor Newhard, myself, and another member of the committee. Um, this could take a couple months, anywhere up to six months, and it's a real positive step forward to protecting and preserving the history of our village. What is the ARB? The Architectural Review Board. It's yes. a, okay. one of the advisory boards of right. the village. By, by um, law, we require, we, as a historic district, we're required to have an Architectural Review Board. But this kind of brings it up it's many level. notches, yeah. yeah. It also opens up funding uh, resources, which would be wonderful for us. So, but I, I think maybe we, we may need to have, you know, get the CLG um, information application to the board and then have a work session just so that everybody can okay. look at it and digest it and see the impact and uh, because oh. it will it will definitely alter the architecture review board as we know it right and so very good and steve here, do you have anything for us oh well you'll be looking at a um conservation advisory board i got tom mcknight's uh, memo today i'll be talking with you in the future about whether you want to do that by code amendment or you want to do it by resolution um he has um pretty extensive list of what it is that your CAC would be doing for you. You might want to have a workshop on that. Or yes. Just, you know. Yeah, I was hoping yeah, that we would. So, good. Okay, anybody else? Raina, anything yeah. from the clerk's office? How are those taxes uh, coming They're in? rolling in. <laughs> <laughs> the deadline is July 1st. July 1st, yes, Today please remind to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, may I have a motion to uh, Go home. No, final comments from the floor. With that? Final comments. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Final comments from the floor? Anyone? No? Okay. okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was a record. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Barry, if Barry has the record, actually. Well, I mean, as long as I've been here, which is not very long. What did you think about the voice thing? I'm actually really sad about that. I'm going to write a letter and see if they're willing to join our college. We've got their high school kids.